Our second reading today is from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus is speaking here. He is speaking to the disciples in his farewell address. So Jesus says to them, I am the vine, the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in it that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The gospel of the Lord and the people say, praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Today's text is Jesus' final I am statement. It's part of his farewell address to the disciples, his parting words to give his followers strength in the days after his death. Jesus' metaphors or images are familiar to his followers, tell theological truths. The power of a metaphor is not that it defines something directly. The power is that it points to something, something very memorable. The fact is, we remember images much better than remember simple words. That's the power of the metaphor. The way he uses images gives them meaning beyond simple truths. Jesus has a, used a whole series of metaphors. Jesus has already said, I am the bread. I am the light. I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am life, the way, and truth. Now his last metaphor, I am the true vine. Now, vine, of course, in this case, implies grape, grapes and grapevines. So I'd ask, have you ever tried growing grapes? I'll admit, I have tried growing grapes. I have tried pruning grapes. I have had one disaster after another. Even when I did get close to getting it right, and just as those bunches were starting to turn from green to purple, looked so beautiful, was so full of potential, our local raccoons decided that their harvest was more important than mine. Just so frustrating. Actually, when it comes to grapes, I have a, had a fellow engineer in California <clears throat> that was developing a robotic vine pruner, cameras and images. It would follow up the vine, follow out a branch, count the number of leaf nodes, leaf nodes, and prune at a set number. One, two, three, prune. An impressive piece of technology could make for very productive vineyards with minimum labor input. Of course, Jesus could pick this metaphor since his audience would have known about vines and vineyards and the work they required, just like they knew about sheep and shepherds earlier. They know that if left alone, vines would become thick and wild, plants would attach themselves to just about anything. They would know plants would grow uncontrollably and result in a big tangled mess. A vine grower or a vine dresser 
is needed to keep the vines in order and productive. The paradox is that the vine grower must do two things. First, cut away any lifeless, unproductive branches. That may be hard work, but seems relatively straightforward. And I could handle that part with my vines. The second is to, produ is to prune those branches that are productive in order to make them more productive. That to me is the most challenging. Young vines are not allowed to produce fruit for the first few years as they build their strength. And at some point, all the branches need to be pruned or cut. Drastic pruning is still needed each season so that the plant can develop and yield to its fullest. Jesus reminds his audience, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. What do you think the disciples heard when Jesus says this to them? God is the vine grower. Jesus is a vine. We, the disciples, are the branches. <clears throat> Jesus is the true vine, is the source of life of all the branches. It is God who tends to the flourishing branches and likewise will <clears throat> remove every branch that yields no fruit. What is the key way for the branches to avoid this pruning and being unfruitful? Well, in the text, it is abiding. With almost mantra-like intensity, the word abide is repeated eight times in this short text. Abide in me, Jesus says. So then what is meant by abiding in Jesus? In this Easter or post-resurrection season, <clears throat> what does it mean for us to abide in him? And is the process relying on abiding in the vine an easy one? I would say hardly easy. <clears throat> First and foremost, abiding in him means we cannot or should not try to go it alone in our spiritual lives. This is what Parker Palmer once described as free floating spirituality. Jesus invites us to ab abide in him as he abides in us, but also clearly reminds us the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it connects and draws from the vine. Neither can we be fruitless, fruitful unless we abide in him. Free floating spirituality is not an option. We also need to recognize that in our society, there is a widespread and inviting idea of going it alone, often portrayed as individualism. Dependency on anyone or anything else or interrelatedness to accomplishments of others are rarely valued to the extent that individualism is. Yet this passage flies in the face of that attitude. This passage says we are invited to and must rely on Jesus as the vine, our source for all. Anything different challenges us. Abiding is Jesus' word. Individually and collectively, we can deeply engage in these, these, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the allergy season is catching up with me a bit here today too. Another different abiding challenge is that we both individually and collectively can be deeply engaged in things of the church in visible and seemingly meaningful ways, doing good works for the church, yet not be truly collect connected to Christ. In this case, we can eventually see the vine grower getting around to pruning 
even the active growing branches if the fruit is just not there. We can expect that the vine, the vine grower to deal with the branches in a manner that will alter their very being and formation. For Jesus says, whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. <clears throat> if first and foremost abiding means not going it alone in our spiritual lives, then the second, close second, is this reliance on Jesus. For abiding in Christ as the vine is being open to growth, open to opportunity to bear much fruit while remaining connected to the vine. Come, this comes with both pruning and growth. When God is doing the maintenance, we are assured that new life and new growth will result result from our reliance on Jesus. Now, if we stay with the vine metaphor and move to the context of our own current reality, we have the reality of our own individual image of abiding in him. We also have the image of where we as a church, where we as a congregation are to be if we are abiding in him. I want to comment on a very practical element of discerning that image of abiding in him for us as West Berlin Presbyterian Church. Later this week, Tuesday evening, at my request, session will dig into updating our church's action plan. Our action plan had its origin in 2017, was updated in 2019, let me share with you the introduction. I think it sets the tone for what we're trying to do. The intent is to create and maintain a plan that clearly as possible defines the path for our small, strong church with a big heart in terms of actionable items. While respecting our history and legacy, acknowledging our present, we must look to what is the best for the future of our church. What is God calling us to do and be in this time and place? We've been looking at our action plan on about a two year time frame, And I'd have to say much has changed in our time and place in the two years since we last spent some focus time on this plan. I'm convinced that now is the right time to capture a vision and consensus for our next steps. Now, in our polity, it's the responsibility of session to give leadership to the church for this type of activity. But leadership does not mean session going off and doing it by itself. It does not represent abiding as we have just discussed. You the congregation are all branches attached to the vine. You have contributions to make and a vested interest in the outcomes. A likely process I could envision that session will likely follow is session will take a first stab at some suggested revisions, maybe some new actions. Some of those actions may be simply to say we're very comfortable with the directions in some areas. Some actions may say we need to refresh and redirect some actions. Some may say we need some different approaches altogether. Some may even say it's time we do not need to do some things we have done in the past. It's going to be very important that all our committees, including the Deacon and Mission Board, be directly engaged. It's important that you as individuals also have opportunity to express ideas, react to plans and help formulate the revised plan. Think of this plan that it should follow and develop our consensus about how we will use the energy from the vine to grow and produce fruit. 
as you think about what's changed in the past two years, including our major adjustments to the COVID pandemic, we are in a different place. We have learned a lot about ourselves and our opportunities and our challenges. Who would have thought that the majority of even our most senior members would become successful Zoomers? Who would have thought we would have higher and geographically diverse attendance on Sunday morning when we're not even meeting in the building? Who would have thought we would have the painful experience of not being able to welcome the community to those wonderful Friday evening dinners? Who would have thought that even during a pandemic, houses continue to replace corn stalks almost literally outside our front door? As, as an aside, I assure you that the worship and outreach committee and the session are working diligently and with great care on return to safe in-person worship. Not easy in our case, but we're working towards getting there. Also, we fully intend to include a way to continue to participate remotely, likely through Zoom. This will take some energy in the short run, but does not replace thinking ahead even further. You may have noted that I've been very careful not to say to return to normal. <clears throat> I personally do not think there is a quote normal for us to return to. The world has changed, we have changed. There I did it. I use that nasty word change. I know change can be difficult, it can be threatening, it can be painful. If done poorly, it can be devastating. However, if done thoughtfully, it can also be exciting and energizing. That's why I think it is the right time for us to be spending some quality time on our action plan as a church. We are a small, strong church with a big heart. We wanna keep it that way. You will hear more about this as we proceed. You will have opportunity to make input and I hope you will. I anticipate that this will take well into the fall to get the next iteration of our action plan, which of course will always be a work in process. If you wanna see what the current action plan looks like, it is on the church's website under the more tab over there on the right side. You can drop down and look at what it looks like right now. As a closing thought, I wanna go back to Jesus' words to his disciples. As almost everything was about to change for those disciples, at this point in time, just before his crucifixion, he gives them words of advice and counsel. I pray these words can guide us in our endeavors as well. From the message translation, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Let us abide with him to assure that abundant harvest. Amen.